Hi there, I'm Nutrix, and today we're talking about how to set up a DAW, in this case, Ableton Live 11, with a, a hardware synthesizer, so you can actually control all of the parts with it. I had two questions this week about it, how to make it work. People buy hardware, and they're doing a lot of DAW-less systems, and it's fine, but sometimes when they want to connect with a sequencer, they go, okay, how do I make it? Because when I program everything on screen for my VST, it works well and it's easy because it's on screen. But when I want to do that with my hardware, because I bought it and it sounds good, I want this to react to the controller. I don't know how and it doesn't work. So first of all, I'll explain a couple of things. Verify that it can do that. That's one thing. Make it, you know, the right connection. I'll explain that and, the, and, and how to set it up so you can actually can record. And there's some question about how Ableton works around that because there's some concepts that changes along how you work in your workflow. And that's where it could be difficult if you don't follow correctly. So first thing first, the device that you have, in this case, I've got a Mini Freak. I had a question about the TB03. I had a question about a, another Juno uh, from Roland. The question is, does the machine that you're trying to control can be controlled the way you're looking to control it? What? Can it do the stuff that you want it to do through MIDI? Most of them can do through the internal connection because that's where you, you play with the knobs and it works. But can it do the things you're trying to do through MIDI information? And to know that, you need to go to our website and I've got this MIDI implementation chart. That's the first thing you should understand. If you don't know how to read this, go on. I did a video about this. It should be there somewhere on be or below about the MIDI implementation chart. It's everything that your MIDI device can receive and send. Everything is there, but you need to know how to read it. In the case of the MIDI Freak, it's very simple. It's just a big list of what it can do. CC means control change, and that's what we're looking for because these are controllers that you want in real time to control, in this case, the parameters of the synthesizer. Um, and this is a kind of the new way to show it. So it's very simple. You see, hey, I want to control the VC2. Here's the controllers. I want to control the analog filter. There's a cutoff. It's 74. If you send controller number 74, it's going to change the cutoff value. So you've got your list of messages. So you can, you should, if you have these devices, you print that out, you put it on your wall. You say, I want to control this. You don't know where. Okay, 74, that's the one. So if you want to draw from scratch, you can do that. It's it's there. And all of your devices should be able to do that in the case that you want to control them from a sequencer. If not, they won't be able to because they will not recognize these messages and they will not respond to them. The other way to show this, it shows you a more traditional way of showing the media implementation chart. This chart is the one you see in most hardware devices since media was invented 40 years ago okay and the one part we want to look at you've got the functions control change the cc we just look for the mini freak transmitted is can the messages be transmitted by the hardware recognize can it be recognized by the hardware and remarks on, on how, what it is in the case of the tb03 you see you've got 74 again it's cutoff frequency 71 is resonance 19 is delay feedback. So get the list of the sounds controller values you have here. Um, and the fact that O means it responds, it's yes, and X means no. So it can respond to all these messages. It can transmit them and recognize them. So I will respond to them. So this tells you that this device can be played in real time on the knobs. And these are sending MIDI messages. So same thing with the Mini Freak. I can play all, almost all of the knobs on the machine. So I can do a performance of synthesis if I want. Record that performance in my DAW. And the output will be now sent to this when I play back. It's not just going to play back the notes performance, but also all the knobs performance if that's what I want to do. So really, really interesting when you try to when you start using this. It's really powerful. Now, we need to go into a detail onto, onto something that most people don't get, is that you have a local control between the keyboard and the brain. Another way to say that is that a synthesizer is basically 
two modules into one or more than two. You have the controller parts of so the keyboard, the knobs. This is the controller that can be basically would be looked at as being a you know keyboard that is just a MIDI keyboard without any brain to generate sounds. So same logic here. That keyboard is a keyboard. It sends MIDI internally because when you turn it on, you want to be able to play and hear something. But when you connect to a DAW in your studio, it's less logical for it to control the internal sound because that same keyboard could also trigger this or that or this other device over there. So then when you play, I don't want to hear locally because this controller now is the main controller for the entire studio. So I want to disconnect the two and I want this only to play when in my DAW, I reassign the output to control the internal sound. So the DAW becomes the routing system to assign to the right MIDI module, if you want, either in a synth or in a module rack mount somewhere else. So basically, this is two device at least into one box. And that's for a lot of the things we have today hardware-wise. You have a beatbox, you have a sequencer, you have pads, you've got keyboards, you've got step sequencer. They're all generator of MIDI messages, but they're not generating, generating sound. They're triggering a sound module that is also in the same box. So that part is really important. So we know that the device we want to control can do it. That's the first logic. Understand that they can do it. So look into the media implementation chart, verify it works because it will save you time when you try to make it work. That's for sure. A new life set. So first thing, if I play here, you see that when I play, you've got MIDI coming in. The sound I hear is the direct sound that goes into my Model 16, my mixer, and that's the one I hear. So I hear like a play on the synth. But what I want to be able to do is to record it and control the MIDI freak. So all in, these are the MIDI input. I can select the MIDI freak only. So it comes from this one. And I want to send it to the MIDI freak. So this is where it's going to be sent. So. But it's not being sent right now because I'm in auto mode. So if I put in, so it's going to monitor always what's coming in. But now I've got a problem because I'm actually playing it twice. Yes, what I mean by that is I'm, when I play a key, I'm playing internally between the controller, the keyboard, and the sound module. But at the same time, it goes into my DAW and sends back into the MIDI input. So each note is played twice. One locally, and one through the uh, routing of the Ableton Live session. So I would need to actually disconnect these two at one point. So what I can do, I have to go into a menu somewhere in the device and look for MIDI control off. There's on and off. So on is by default. You put it off. The problem is that when you turn it off and you take your kit, your synth and you go to a friend's place to play, now it doesn't play, you think, oh, I broke it. It's not broken, it's because the local control is that off, so when you press, press keys, it only sends by the MIDI output, but it doesn't control the internal machine. So you need to reconnect that. So inside, you go back to local control and you turn it on. So in this case, it's in the utility section into MIDI, somewhere then over there, there's MIDI control, turn it off. And what I get when I turn it off, I get this. Well, it's the same thing. Yes, because now MIDI goes into Ableton Live, sends back into the module, I hear it. So if I go record here, I'm going to activate the record mode. Press record. So now it plays back, and I hear nothing. You go, well, it doesn't work. Of course it doesn't work, because now I'm still into... I'm still in monitoring mode. So when I'm, the MIDI note that are being sent to the brain of the MIDI freak or my hardware synth is the input because I'm in monitoring only. So it only sends what plays on my hardware. If I put it into auto mode, it switch, switch back to playback because now I'm in playback mode. I'm playing the, the clip. Now the clip is actually the one being the generator of the MIDI message. So it sends the MIDI message to my Arturia MIDI Freak, and it works. So if I go back to play here, we 
because I'm not playing back anymore. It works if I play back here. And it adds the two. So what I like to do now is to add the controllers, but this is me. Not everybody do, does it this way. What I like to have is I take the other track and I call this one just MIDI control, you know, MIDI. I would say it's a mini MF or mini freak control. So in this one, what I have, I'm going to have the same input. It's going to mini freak coming in. The output's going to be sent to the mini freak. But what I'll record in this one is just the controllers, just the knobs changing. See, when I change a knob, you see the value. It's not a lot of information because it's just a knob saying eh, plus, minus, plus, minus, whatever it is. It's just one controller. So it's not as much messages as notes and velocity. And when you see these notes here, they represent the velocity, how loud you're playing and the hard you play the keys. So if I play that sequence here, and I start recording on this one. And I record this. Now if I play that back. So if I go into this screen here, well, there's nothing. Of course, I don't, have, I don't have any notes. But if you look into envelopes, MIDI control here instead of mixer, and go, these are the list of all the MIDI controls I have. It's 74. So that's what I recorded. Okay. controls changes that you want you can draw new ones and if you oh I want to control another one well the list that we talked earlier if you know which one that you printed is on your wall that is the one for here so it might not be like this it says MPC slides something like number five no it's got off frequency so um, I don't know if you can actually rename them but uh, I know which one is which. So again, print out this information, put it on your wall, and I know which one is the right one. So this is one way to do it. But right now, I'm hearing it through my mixer. Some of you will say, well, I don't have a mixer. I want to hear it through my computer because I'm sending this into my sound card and I want it to be in my computer. So then you go into the audio here from, and uh, in my case, it goes into 11. So I'm going to go 11, 12. Put it into auto mode. I'm going to record. And if not, I'll, yeah, because I lost. Uh, and that's where it might be misleading. You go, okay, now it doesn't, it doesn't play. No, because when I leave the recording button of, of these two, I'm actually now only monitoring the audio because I'm going to record this. So now it works if I press record. Because now it plays the playback and it records it in as a clip. But my MIDI control does not work anymore because the auto mode only works if I turn it back into recording. Now, if I want to do the two at the same time, well, you pressed on this. You can, can you do the two at the same time? Yes. You press on command and you press on the one you record. So you can actually now play back and listen because you put the two of them into recording and they switch automatically into monitoring the input, the MIDI input and the recording audio input. <laughs> is that clear? <laughs> I hope it is. Um, some people do not separate the two, uh, the, the MIDI controller and the MIDI information, and it's fine. You can just use the same one track and it's even simpler with now the capture uh, function so you can just play with the knobs and record it so you could record this also on top but I like that feature having them separately because I can try different things and just I copy these two together and it works like that I mean it's not simple but it's the most efficient way to have full control over what's coming in and what's coming out and I know some say well I prefer to have external hardware external exter in instruments so you take some people take like this and say okay that External instrument will do everything I want. So I'm going to turn these off. 
and we'll do it with this one instead. So now I'm going to say it's going to come from Micro Mini Freak and external instrument. It's going to go to Mini Freak here, and the output will be 11 and 12. That's what we did earlier. So now if I press here. Okay, so it's, it works, and so if I go like that, and go back this. Here you can go again into MIDI, you MIDI controller, you go pitch band, you go 74. It was not able to record it, but now I can still draw it. So you can draw what you want. So it means that this is still in local control off. And what I don't understand is when I move this, now it doesn't send MIDI. So this is kind of the odd thing. If I go here, it does send MIDI. But if I go here, it seems not to be recording. Actually, can I record? Can I record on top of this one? It doesn't do overdub recording. So again, you could take this one here. still use this and control that because it's still being sent to the same mini freak so you're still combining the playback of the external instrument plus the controller that comes from my control track so you could still have this separate if you want to so that's the logic i hope uh i hope it's clearer i hope it's easier and you need to figure out a way to make it work into your workflow. And the one thing you will forget is the monitoring, the on off monitoring. Hey, it doesn't work well because you forgot about activating monitoring in or somewhere. That's it for today. Hope it's useful. Make some music. See you soon. Stay safe. Bye.